Pastor Kao, and I won't, maybe by the time we get to with this conference we're going to have with him, I can speak his name, but so far I can't. I think they call him Pastor K. He called me Saturday morning, and um, he relayed a prophecy to me he received concerning the USA. And this is what he said that the Lord gave him for the United States. The Lord is going to overtake the United States, beginning with Houston, Texas. And he will visit in fire and in power. And then he said, now he, I don't know when he got that word, okay? I, God gave it to him. But at last year's Houston conference hosted by his church, and his church is paying for and hosting this conference that's coming up, a prophecy came forth that the Lord was going to connect him with an assembly of white people that was prophesied in the conference. <laughs> Immediately following the conference, now we have a, we, I don't call us a white assembly because we have, uh, you know, race, all races and colors here, but that's, that's the way he got the, I guess we largely are. Okay, so immediately following the conference, he and his church members came to Eastgate. They came in one Tuesday morning and they had come out of that conference, and I mean they come in there in power. And we felt it, and it was, whew, it was, it was tangible, fire and power. They'd come out of that conference and uh, came forth with prophecies with fire. And then they came over to my house Sunday night, and we had another very powerful meeting at my home that night. So what he's telling me, the fact that God supernaturally connected him with this white assembly <laughs> uh, is a is a divine connection appointed by God and we are participating in a conference hosted by his church on May the 31st through June the 3rd his church is fasting and praying believing the Lord that the same fire and power they're experiencing in Nigeria will be, will be released in that conference now, we know that every revivalist, every preacher in the United States is waiting for that same thing to happen, and they want God to use them, okay? And hey, hallelujah, I can tell you this. Whoever God releases it for, I'm with them. <laughs> I'm with them, okay? It doesn't have to be me. Um, I told him that we will pray in agreement with that prophecy and for them to bring it on. Bring it on. Yes. We need a fresh filling of fire and power in the church in the United States of America. And there are people in this room that you've experienced fillings of fire and power, and you know what that's like, and you know what it is for the saints to be worn out. These are critical, serious days. We have been worn out from the long battle over our national election. Some of you drag it, it's because we were battling for so long. Nationwide, key men and women in the body of Christ, strategic ministries and civil authorities have been under unprecedented pressures. We at Eastgate know about those pressures. We at Eastgate have passed through a three-year season of extreme birth pains. But always, I'm not even thinking about the pains of the birth because I know something's going to be birthed. If you're in extreme birth pain, something's coming forth, and I'm looking for the coming forth. But we have crossed over, and we're now in the realm of victory. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, and this is amplified. That we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him, and blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love. 
He foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it pleased him and was his kind intent so that we might be to the praise and commendation of his glorious grace. The besetting weakness among us who have heard the glorious truth of the gospel of the kingdom for many decades and like me preached it, and I am a woman of faith, but somehow we haven't taken the glorious gospel that we preach and put our faith together to where that we are uh, delivering creation. We're grounded in the great foundational message, but we have not brought forth the deliverance that creation is crying out that the sons of God will perform. Creation is crying out for the sons of God to come forward and deliver it. And even though we have knowledge of this and we know this, we haven't done it yet. Through the election process 2016, the political and religious heads of the kings of Babylon were chopped off. However, and I got this by prophetic when I wrote it down. It came to me by the spirit. Political and religious heads of the kings of Washington, D.C. have not yet, have yet to fall. And we think of the Babylonian spirits and we think of the uh, Pharaoh and his spirits and the spirits of this nation and the spirits of that nation. Let me tell you, when I wrote this down, the Lord says uh, there are demonic spiritual kings in Washington, D.C. There are the spirits of the kings in Washington, D.C just like there are Babylonian spirits. And we can say, well, those Babylonian spirits came over here and got into us. Fine and dandy, yes, they did. But these are separate demonic powers, and they are called by those that are in Washington, D.C. Got that last night. Hallelujah. The word that was powerfully conceived in, conceived in the mind of God must be accurately written in the affairs of the church so that it can be effectively read by the world of humankind. Those of you who were here early, I shared a dream that I had uh, where there was going to be an attack of, of division, and God gave me specific. He told me specifically how to handle it, what was going to be said, and a and way to deal with it. That's how the church should operate. God warns us. He tells us what's going to happen, and he tells us specifically exactly how he wants it done. What other way is there? But flesh. How tragic that we've come to the time when God would bring to birth, and all that we've produced is a wind of doctrine. The knowledge of a thing is not the possession of it. We need fire and power. Bring it on, Nigeria. I'm ready. <laughs> but bring it on, Holy Spirit. The members of the body of Christ, his glorious church, have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Moreover, we have been fully initiated into the new covenant by experiencing the blood, the water, and the Spirit. These three bear witness in the earth the blood, the water, and the spirit. We have tasted and we have seen that the Lord is good to us. What more could, we are blessed people. I'm standing before a blessed people. Amen. Today, I am preaching a message to a blessed people. Yes, and I am speaking this message that God gave me to a people who are already walking in the blessing of it. Yes. I'm blessed. My children are blessed. This congregation is blessed. But there's a world, there's a cosmos outside my refuge. And in the cosmos are hurting people who are lost. 
there are people with diseases that we should have authority over. There are demonic powers and strongholds over nations. Church that you're supposed to have authority over. And God sent forth a very strong man, and he's evidently known him with grace, President Trump, and he almost single-handed with no help at all from any of the government or the media, some media helped him, single-headed, chopped off all of these kings of Avalon. Okay, now he's having to deal with the kings of Washington, D.C. Different ball game. Different ball game. But, and we're, we're the ones that's supposed to have the authority over this. You got to take authority over your own life. But God wants us to come on and rise up and take authority over all of this that He's put, not, put under our feet. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You've had trouble in your life. You didn't come this far without it. If you haven't had trouble, just hang around long enough, it'll come. <laughs> Somewhere in this life, there will be trouble come. And, but you've overcome it. And you found, you found one thing in the midst of your trouble. That Jesus Christ was your refuge. And it was through your prayers to him that you got through it and you drug everybody else through that was in trouble. Yes. <laughs> you grabbed hold of those people causing the trouble and you drug them through the trouble. But the Hebrew word for refuge here means a shelter from rain and storm and danger. Our refuge is a person. In the person, there is a place. And in the place, there is a peace. In the peace, there is a posture. And that posture is an aggressive one who commands the army of the Lord. Go forward. Attack. Charge. As I said, I'm speaking to a congregation of blessed people. You're blessed over and above what the average person is blessed in this congregation. And if, you, if you're not just hanging around here long enough, it's going to fall on you. <laughs> it, that blessing will fall on you. Okay, so if you're that greatly blessed, and you are, then God says, okay, I've blessed you. Go forward, attack, and charge. No rocking chair. Amen. <laughs> Gary Moore yesterday uh, from Second Baptist was one of the ministers at the funeral. So as we were waiting to go out, and we were sitting there chatting, and he said that he uh, was now ministering to a group of older people. And I said, well, I guess I could say that I'm doing that too. <laughs> but God keeps us with younger people in to keep us healthy. So, I'm pr so you younger people don't give up on us. Don't think we're, we're, we haven't got it going on. We got we hadn't lost it, and we got it going on. All right. In this present season, his elect must be on the offensive, not laid back, cautious, and comfortable. <laughs> First and most importantly, our refuge is the person of Jesus Christ. Second, our refuge is a place, and there is a place in Christ. Third, our refuge is our peace, and there is a peace in the place. And fourth, our refuge is a posture. There is a posture in the peace. This posture is one of complete trust in the Lord. That no matter what life throws at you, and if you live long enough, it, you're going to get some stuff. But no matter what comes at you, if you completely trust in the Lord, you're going to go through it. Yes. If not, he'll take you home. So, yes. But we're safe and secure in Jesus Christ. 
The fruit of this trust is boldness and confidence with access. Go after the enemy. But you got to know what your, who, what your enemy is. Is your enemy your flesh? Is your enemy inside of you? Is it your fears, doubt, and unbelief? What is your enemy? But once we have boldness and confidence of who we are in Christ Jesus, then we are able to boldly take this word of God and walk out in it because God doesn't want us just to have head knowledge of it and a knowledge about it. God wants us to own it. And if we own it, then we have the boldness to walk in it. You don't walk around hiding behind some post because some demon's going to get you running down the road. <laughs> or you hide under this and you hide that because there was a big bad demon in somebody at church. Well, what do you, I mean, what do you go to church for? People go to church to get set free. Go after it. Matthew 16, 18. This is King James. Upon this rock, I, and that would be Jesus, will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Many of you had times when you might have been chased by mean people. You could have been chased by mean dogs, or you could have been chased by anything. But there's not a single one of you ever been chased by a gate. <laughs> Not a single one of you has ever been chased by a gate. Right? right? We, the church, must be directionally challenged. God's people are not being attacked here. Rather, we are storming the gates of hell. And these spirits cannot resist us, according to that word that God tells me. And we're spo not supposed to be trembling and moaning and groaning and carrying on here. That devil's coming after me and he's just about got me down and I just can't get up from here because the devil is hitting me so hard. Do you see that written in your Bible? No. <laughs> I'm just wondering. <laughs> we're supposed to storm those gates. And darkness cannot understand or overcome light. Similarly, we have misunderstood the principle of binding and loosing. Sometimes we get it right, and sometimes we may bind and loose the wrong things. But, but Psalm 149, 5 through 9. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, all his saints have this honor. And we, that would be imprecatory praying. And people would say, you're not supposed to pray like that. Well, I'm not going to pray that anyone gets hurt or anything, but I sure am going to bind up those devils in them. And how do I know they've got a devil? They're not acting like Jesus. They're not talking like Jesus. They're not walking out the word of God. Their vain conversation has nothing to do with the conversation of heaven. Uh, let's say what heaven's saying. What we've known about binding and loosening is set forth by the psalmist in Jesus' teaching in Mark 16, 15 through 20. That's good. We'll take it all. In the, you don't see much deliverance of binding and loosening in the outer court, which is the denominations. You don't see it out there in the outer court. I don't know if they do much teaching on it. Not even sure they do any deliverance on it. Um, in the holy place, the Feast of Pentecost, every spirit-filled Christian has the authority to bind the adversary. 
Once you have come into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, once you have come into the realm of Pentecost, it's a realm. Get over dates. It's a realm. To speak to circumstances and to loose heaven's blessings in the name of Jesus. Okay. Once you come in to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you have that authority over the adversary. It's yours. But there's a third dimension that completes the whole truth about binding and loosing. From the most holy place, the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a realm of glory. It's the third realm of heaven. The place of our full maturity in Christ. There flows a creative river of agreement with the word of the Lord. Matthew 16, 19. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven keys of the kingdom of heaven and whosoever you shall and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven wow that's a lot of authority well we've prayed out over all kinds of things haven't we the word for bind used here is the primary verb dio it means to bind to put under obligation used of the law Duty to be, to be bound to one, a wife, a husband. The key principle of Dio is it is a covenantal word. It primarily speaks of marriage and covenant, of a living relationship. The key is who and what you bind. All that you declare legally binding is who and what you are. Okay. You have the legal authority inside of you that has already been given to you to bind to yourself whatever it is that you speak and say. Okay, I'm going to show this to you. Y'all looking at me. Who and what we are is what the Father decreed over us and about us when we were a word in his mouth. Either Christ is bound to us or Adam is bound to us. <laughs> Adam was not justified. Adam was put to death, killed at the cross. Christ, the new man, was justified and declared to be righteous. We are a new creation. You learned that. That's uh, Christianity 101. In Christ Jesus. And have arisen to walk in newness of life. And some of you might have said, well, I don't know about this new creation. It's still got some flaws. But we are buried with him through baptism unto death. Romans 6, 4. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father... Even so, we also should walk in newness of life every day, every day. Old things are passed away. And everything hinges on how we think, and how we think determines how we act. Okay. If you are allowing your mind to imagine things that are perverted that are evil, uh, that are uh, uh, sexual, that are um, not in alignment with God, eventually you're going to act on what you're allowing your mind to think on. You will do it if you keep allowing that mind to think on these things. The retrieval of our right mind along with our right name and language, has given us a resurrection mindset. We're victors, not victims. We're attacking hell. Hell is not attacking us. Amen. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Those gates aren't attacking us. We're supposed to be attacking it. 
Matthew 16, 18 declares that the church is to move aggressively against these gates. Gates are metaphorical of the access or entrance to any state of darkness, any evil spirit. I teach people boundaries are healthy, but walls keep out God. The same thing with these gates. These gates can either be open and let God in, or you can run into a gate of hell, which is the gate of darkness. The strategies and schemes that originate in death and hell come into the earth through people who are gates for demonic spirits. Now, people may say, well, well out there, all these spirits are just roaming around. They've been cast out into the dry places, and they've been sent to the bottom of the sea, and these spirits are all rising up. Well, they came in through some person sometime. If they're bound up and kept out there in the dry places, don't be in, they got to, you got to invite them into your life. Amen. You have to leave a, a door open in your life for those spirits to come in. Yes. If you close off all of the cracks in your life where Satan has access in your mind or in your actions, if you close all those off and seal them up, Satan has no access to you. Now, you cannot control your children's access. <laughs> They're going to have to do it themselves. All you can pray is that the Father send forth the Holy Spirit to bring them in. The mind of Christ that originates in the heavens comes into the earth through men and women previously marked for greatness. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The church armed with truth and anointed by the Spirit has the authority to forcefully and uncompromisingly attack hell's gates. The spirits that operate behind certain situations and circumstances and bring his glory into the earth. There are gates of hell in Washington, D.C. There are gates of hell. We are bound to Jesus Christ and his finished work. And we must agree in the earth with what has already been bound in the heavens. The good report of what our Father has already decreed over us. David, Father, God has already decreed that your operation will be successful and you're healed. And that you will fulfill your kingdom purpose. That's what Father God has decreed. Amen? Amen? The works were finished from the foundation of the world. Hebrews 4.3 The works were finished from the foundation of the world. All those things are finished. How do we get into the finished part? We get into the there where God places us into his will and we get into his kingdom purpose for us and then we get into the finished work now I can't be wandering around here, out here doing whatever my flesh wants to do and doing whatever I think might be the good thing for me to do and I'm going to be part of that finished work I want to be in the finished work the father's degree and the son's agreement are forever bound into the warp and wolf of the blood of the everlasting covenant. It is the work of the Holy Ghost to help us remember all these spiritual blessings. In this third day, we're not just binding the enemy. With our life and lips, we're binding ourselves to Christ's person and his work. We simply agree with God with what he has already bound. Now, the hard part of this seems to be, maybe, I don't know, I'm just guessing, is that sometimes you were born with a hard head. <laughs> and God has a hard, God has to get that stubborn, stiff neck, hard head to agree with him 
instead of you trying to push God to agree with you. To agree with him and his predetermined plan is to say no, to tear ourselves loose, to not, I'm sorry, to not agree with him is to say no to God and to tear ourselves loose from his loving embrace. We don't trust him and we don't obey him. After all, God made me and my flesh was made by God and he wants me to be whoever I am. No, God says, I want you to come into obedience, and I want you to be who I've said you are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> There's a lot of people, Christians, walking around being who God made them. Who they didn't, God didn't make you to be that way. Amen. Your flesh did that. Can two walk together except they be agreed? How are you going to walk with Jesus if you're not agreeing with him? Or how can you claim that you're walking side by side with Jesus if you're not agreeing with him? Are you saying, now, come on over here, Jesus, and let's do it this way. The word for agreed here means to fix upon by agreement or appointment, to meet at a stated time, to summons, to trial, to engage for marriage. The appointment was in the meeting that we've been talking about that was in heaven before the sun and the moon and the stars was made and, and when the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost met and they decided on you. But the Father decreed and the Son agreed in that meeting. The Lamb and his wife were married in that meeting. You've been elected for greatness. You know it. You've been elected for greatness. I mean, when you were coming up and you turned into a teenager and you were strutting around because you were so cute, you already knew that you were supposed to be great because there was something in you that says, hey, I'm special. <laughs> in Christ, you have regained your right mind, your name, and your language. All he wants is your hard head to come in agreement with him. <laughs> Simply agree with God. Begin to bind yourselves and all who are in your world to all that which is binding in Christ in him. So last night y'all got prayed for. Parents, bind your children to the kingdom of God. Y'all should have felt it. Grandparents, speak with authority concerning your legacy. Pastors, bind your local church to his will. Oh, I did some praying last night when I was doing it. I was binding these gate ministries to Jesus Christ. I was binding you to Jesus Christ. I was, I was binding his purpose for you to Jesus Christ. I, my children got bound again last night. I wonder if they felt it. I called them out by name, and I bound them to Jesus Christ again, and I bound them to the kingdom of God again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Try praying for them like that. I don't know if y'all felt anything last night, but y'all sure got some praying going on. <laughs> Amen. Bind every family in the house to the blessing of the everlasting covenant. I bound every family that's supposed to be part of this ministry to the blessing of the everlasting covenant. Thank you. What greater blessing could you have? Amen. I bound you. Go home and pray for your children. You're worried something your children not doing quite right? Go home and God's giving you the authority, you know. You have, God, God gave you the authority over your household. And that, let me tell you, there's pastors out there, and I know some names, and they're trying to run households from their pulpit, and they're taking control of people's families and making a huge mess because their own household is a mess. And they don't have authority over your family. Amen. Fathers, 
house, you are the priest of your home. And if you don't, if there's no father in the house, then the mother is. And you have the authority between you and God over your household. Amen. Amen. Go home or now, whenever. You go home and you bind everything that God has given you to Jesus Christ. Yes. Bind them to the kingdom of God and bind them to the eternal blood covenant. We got to we got to raise this level. Amen. Glory to God. Now that doesn't mean when you bind them to Jesus Christ that you go in there and say, "Now God, you know I want them to do this, this, and this, and this." <laughs> right? You just bind them to Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, he can handle it. Amen. Amen. Of course, my kids, my children get prayed for every time I put a message together. Whenever I get in there, I lay it on my kids and I lay it on y'all in prayer before I bring it forward. And I, and whoever else I think of, well, I'm, I'm putting a message together. Johnny Barham told me one time that my children had been prayed for more than anybody on earth. <laughs> well, if you knew me them growing up, you would understand why. Gracious. They, uh, somehow another guy and I brought forth strong children. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. <laughs> I get back here before I get in trouble. Prophets arise. I'm speaking to you prophets out there. And bind America and the nations to their predetermined destiny. America right now. Prophets, you, you're doing this and that and the other and something else. And maybe I hope, pray that you're doing what God told you to do. But right now you see this, it looks like this nation going to hell in a, high, in a handbasket. Well, what are you doing? You stand up in the authority that God has given you and you bind this nation to its predetermined purpose and you declare it and call it forth. Numbers 1421. Let's see what my, I'm doing, I'll count my time. As truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. That's God's predetermined purpose. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting around here to be sure I get to see this. Carolyn's already asked me to do her funeral, so that means I've got to outlive her. <laughs> shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Okay, now these prophets are coming in here from Nigeria, and they're already praying for the United States of America. Now, they're not praying that through this meeting that somehow God will make them a great name and through them revival will start and they're going to get on Sid Ross' show and all at once they're going to be famous around the world. They're not praying for that. They're praying to bind America to the fire and the power of our predetermined purpose. Yeah. I shared yesterday at the funeral uh, about one Sunday morning when I preached a pretty strong message. I don't remember what it was, but I know it was strong. And I sat down right there, and Rebecca was up here because I guess I'd prayed for everybody. And I said out loud to Sandra, I guess, oh, what have I done? I put this strong message on our sweet church, and maybe I overdid it this time. <laughs> Rebecca spoke right up. That's the reason why we come here. We, <laughs> we know what 
she says, we know what we're going to get when we come here, and that's why we come. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 2, 2. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. The mountain of the Lord's house is that mountain in, in the book of Daniel about the mountain, the, uh, the kingdom of God. And it's going to be established above all the nations. We're not talking about Zion over in Israel. We're talking about the metaphorical mountain of the Lord's house is going, what God says. It is God's predetermined purpose from the foundation of the earth that the mountain of the Lord's house is to be above all the nations and all the nations of the earth are going to flow to it. Let us bind the nations of the earth to God's predetermined purpose. Authority already given to you. And we're going around... I just got to bind up that old devil that harassing me. God says, I called you to bind nations to my predetermined purposes. Praise God. Woo. God. Y'all feel that? There was a quietness came. which is spoken has been released and that which has been bound this day has been bound and so as it was has been spoken so shall it be oh Jesus Lord we bind Corporately, we bind the nations of the earth to the glory of God. Lord, we bind the America, the United States of America, South America, North America. We bind, we bind America to its predetermined purpose and that it shall arise and the church shall arise. We bind the church to its predetermined purpose in the book of Acts. Ho, oh, hallelujah, glory be to God. Second Corinthians one twenty. For as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes in him. For this reason, we also utter the amen, amen, so be it, to God, through him, to the glory of God. That uttered the amen. That uttered the amen. Agree with God in his word. Say yes and Amen. Diane, who does my hair, um, I, I don't know what her religion was, but it wasn't Christian. But anyway, I've been praying with her for a number of years now. And she has me pray for the sick, and she has me pray for her business and so on. And So one day she says, after you pray, am I supposed to say amen? Of course, she said it in her dialect. And I said, yes, you're supposed to say Amen. And so she says, what does the amen mean? I said, that means that you've come into agreement with God and what God says. 
So now when I pray, she immediately says, Amen. <laughs> she has brought herself into agreement with God. Once you've been delivered by the blood, the water, and the spirit, say yes and amen about yourself. <laughs> okay, now, we're going to get the nation straightened out today, all right? We're going to get America straightened out today. Washington, D.C. is getting straightened out. All the kings of Babylon got knocked down. So now say yes and amen to yourself to what God has declared that you will be. Amen. <laughs> Say yes and amen about your family. Amen. What has God told you about your family? How many prophecies have you had that, that, that they're going to get it together one of these days? <laughs> well, say yes and amen. Say yes and amen about your community, your church, and your ministry that God's called you to. Oh, you got a ministry. It's not mine. I mean, you can't have my ministry. Go get your own. Yes and amen. <laughs> yes and amen. <laughs> Don't covet somebody else's ministry for goodness sake. God put one in you. Don't covet it up. We sometimes I'll drive by a pretty little church and run through my mind, Lord, that would just be the perfect size for us. I say, no way am I going to covet that man's church. I had so many people covet the one we had. And everybody after the service, everybody wanted to know where that little white church was. <laughs> after we turn the camera off, I'm going to tell you all something. Okay. <laughs> Say yes and amen about what God has said about the nations of the earth. You shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Okay, so what can we command him for? Things concerning the sons of God. What God has called the sons of God to do. He's called us to deliver creation. Creation is groaning and moaning for the revelation of the sons of God that you will deliver creation. Everything that concerns the sons of God in the Bible, he tells you to command him. Concerning his work, command me. Now, that doesn't mean your lust. <laughs> that which we declare legally binding is what we are. Arise and prophesy. Say yes and amen to every promise. Begin to decree and declare, create, <coughs> and adjudicate the word already established in the heavens. Psalm 119 and Matthew 24 both say that it is forever settled. Forever, forever, forever. We got to get this thing. We got to walk in it. We don't have time for foolish stuff. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these he will do. Now, the church is just a limping along. We hadn't seen any greater works in years. 
There was a time we did. He brought forth some sons of God back in the 1940s and 1950s. And these sons of God came forth in power and might, and, they, and, and we saw miracles, and we saw changes, and they birthed the charismatic revival into the 70s, and they brought forth the latter rain movement, and they brought forth miracles and signs and wonders, and there was a restoration of the Pentecost back to the church. That's been a long time ago. We're still walking in it. We're still living in it. We're still enjoying what those sons of God brought in. But they're dying off. And I want more. And it, it is an appointed time for God's work in the earth. I received a prophecy Saturday morning that we were an appointed ministry for an appointed time. That we were appointed to be a part of this appointed time. You've been wondering what was birthing around here? It wasn't just survival. His people predestined for greatness have begun to bind and to loose to effectively release the greater works. Mercy, peace, love, evangelism, deliverance, healing, miracles, prophecy, deliver creation, and set the captives free. I made a notation here at the end about the word for finished in Hebrew 4.3 is genomia. And it means that all things came into existence, began to be, and happened. Vine's dictionary add that those works were brought to their predestined end. Finished. Finished.